thanks for coming. And uh, I wanted to uh, um, I wanted to give kind of a peek into my my studio habits and uh, uh, one of the way one of the ways. This isn't the only way that I work out painting. Sometimes uh, you see this is a, a Versailles or a, just a gray underpainting, neutral underpainting. Um, I did I worked this way. Um, while I was working through this uh, series of paintings of the Catskills, so I wanted to get a continuity of, uh, um, yeah, I wanted to get continuity <laughs> in, the, in the whole series. And so I started, I, one of the ways that I um, get consistent, try to get consistency in my work is to work up things a very similar way. But, uh, and like I said, I can, I vary it. But if I'm working a series, I try to uh, maintain uh, that same uh, uh, method. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to do with this series of the cat skills that I had been uh, drawn to um, was to to make the uh, the locale was always already going to make this a cohesive uh, series in the Hudson River Painters. Uh, painted many of these scenes many times over, uh, and so that was going to be a cohesive thing. But I also wanted to implement a, a uh, design uh, commonality, so I used I used the uh, um, golden ratio, the golden uh, rectangle, with the Fibonacci spiral, uh, in uh, creating the compositions for. For it, but I would go out uh, and I would sketch. So I had already explained this to some of you uh, before, and, and so I, I loosely based these compositions. Uh, you have the Haynes Falls over here that I used. Uh, out on this here as well. This the spiral. Uh, it kind of echoes that the, the way uh, things are separated. You have the square here. And the triangle, and then the, uh, the diminishing uh, not the triangle, I mean the rectangles, diminishing uh, forms there. So um, that was one one thing. I I don't adhere to it, uh, you know, rigidly, but it, it gave me a gave me a direction, you know. So um, so what what I would do is I generally I'd start off with a compositional sketch. These are uh, just examples of what I do. Uh, on site. They're not any great uh, masterful drawings or anything. Sometimes, of course, I departed from the, uh, the golden uh, ratio there, but some of these are... This was, this was a painting that uh, um, I decided to make into a almost a square format. Uh, it's truncated there at the bottom. Um, I, I forget exactly why I did that, but I'm pleased with the result there. Even though it's basically the composition is, I just shortened it up. Uh, I, th I think I thought that, that that rock was going to seem massive enough without making it almost half of the uh, piece. So, uh, so that's what I, I will start. I, I start doing a compositional sketch, get that down, and then. And then when I feel like that is successful, I, uh, I would make a, uh, a color study where I would uh, um, start plugging away at, at, uh, in, in the studio, usually. Or, or uh, you know, if I have the time, I'm, I, would, I would like to do that out in plein air. And I would, so this is an in-studio study, uh, color study, to see what works with the, to uh, get the atmosphere and, uh, and so once I do that, then I, and I'm pleased with it, sometimes things just stop at this point because I just don't have the time or the, you know, I have enough things on my plate. But once I'm pleased with the composition, I might uh, bring it to be a larger piece. Um, so what, what, I, what, I, what I want to accomplish with this is, this is an underpainting of uh, uh, acrylic on, uh, on masonite. And then what I've done 
is I've sanded it down uh, fairly smooth so there's no texture. This is just my personal uh, uh, preference for uh, for this particular underpainting. Sometimes I'll, I will do underpaintings that are textural and I like that underneath. But for this, I, I wanted uh, uh, I wanted a smooth underpainting. And then what I and then what I've done and I, uh, after I sanded that down. Uh, so it's basically a, it's basically a tinted uh, acrylic gesso underpainting. And then what I did, I decided I wanted to, because I like the I like the little slicker surface, and it's on panel. You never would do this on on, uh, on a flexible surface. I I, I uh, it was pretty roughly sanded. So so what I did was I I fixed the the panel with shellac. And uh, you could do that with whatever. Uh, um, and that's when it's on a rigid panel. Or, uh, if it's on flexible, that's a bad idea because uh, because shellac is uh, pretty brittle. Um, but it's a it's a it's really an awesome surface to work on. So what I would do uh, was then I would I would um, if this is successful, I match. The color, I, I, I do a lot of pre-mixing with colors, so I would, I would uh, match the uh, paint, pre-mix some of the paint what I'm going to work on. What I like to do is I, I like to start a painting and I do, it, I do start overall painting. So this, this work gives you an idea down here. Um, this part is what the next step of this would be. I start scrubbing it very, very thinly. Um, very, very thinly the uh, local colors. <clears throat> my uh, methodology of, of painting and getting control of my colors is I adhere to a, or I use a, um, a color system called the Munsell color system. And what that does is it allows you to control the value and the chroma, which would be, I guess you would call it the, uh, um, the uh, other terminology loosely equivalent would be the uh, saturation of the color. And so uh, I have found that in nature, most of, well, let me, let me give the little, uh, I, I have some, I have some, uh, if you saw my, uh, studio setup, I have um, quite a bit of pre-mixed colors that I use a lot of, and I've mixed them up to, uh, in, in, in a value uh, scale. Um, and, and what I found was that most, most colors in, in nature tend to be, this, is, this would be, um, the values would be light to dark, uh, and then for each value, there's there's a chroma shift, so it gets more chromatic. And what I found that most uh, most of nature, besides flowers and you know the uh, light shining through uh, leaves and so forth, uh, is right around there's right around the sixth chroma. So it's it's neither gray you know gray or neutral or highly chromatic. Now, you can exaggerate, we as artists like to do that, uh, or you can try to get it as close to life as you perceive. Uh, but, so, what, what I like to do when, when I start with, with uh, bringing this up to the next stage is, is painting uh, um, is painting a couch. Uh, a couch would be a, 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 a Lay a very very thin layer of either oil or uh, um, uh, paint that is it kind of slickens up the surface so you can so you can uh, your paint your brush will drag a lot and you can get smooth gradations and so forth so so uh, what I've got here is a little concoction I have of um, uh, oleo verde which is basically linseed oil, uh, and uh, I soaked copper for about a year into linseed oil, and it dries very quickly. Um, 
it's kind of strange, but it works, especially for other paintings. And so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna squeeze out some of that here, and I'm gonna decide what um, what the overall uh, under tone is going to be of this. Of this, what I'm thinking I'm going to do here is is do a couple different uh, scrubbings. So I'm going to do a, <coughs> a um, or actually I'll probably do a few uh, scrubbings. And, uh, that's what I call it, I guess. And uh, there's very little paint here. And John, were these techniques uh, things that you discovered in your travels? Uh, or were these things you learned in school, um, like soaking oil, linseed oil, copper, and linseed oil? It seems like that. <laughs> That's that obscure. Uh, <laughs> that is one of those really. I, I yeah, it's just something I've, I've heard about along the way. And uh, um, one of uh, one of the things I do is I'll work on copper. And uh, one of the things I noticed when going to museums is that uh, some of these works on copper. They could be 400 years old, and these things look like they were painted yesterday. And, and there's something to the uh, to the uh, bond that the paint has to the copper. Uh, some of the old Dutch uh, uh, 17th century painters, still life painters, uh, uh, worked with copper. Um, there's a one one of the things you have to be mindful of is the mechanical bond, uh, which is you know. Uh, of paint to a surface, and also a chemical bond. With with painting on copper, you get both, <coughs> especially in the underpainting. So there's a lot. There's less atmospheric um, interference uh, when you work on something like a rigid substrate, like a panel or a uh, or copper. Uh, and so, um, but there's also drying. Um, capabilities in the toughening of the film when you get uh, um, it's a long story how I came about that but it's a, it was one of those little science projects and, and using it, it, it there's less uh, um, using it in an under part I want it to dry quicker so if I, it's a sickative it has a sickative quality you can you know there are lead um, dryers you can add to paint uh, which dry the paint film very thoroughly all the way through. There are other paint cobalt paint uh, dryers that tend to dry the surface and not and not especially when and I work very thinly so I don't have to worry too much about um, you know uh, uh, the um, uneven drying of the paint film so. Um, but if you're working thickly, you have to be careful uh, with dryers and so forth. So, but uh, working thinly, so th it's it's rather gentle, uh, sick of quality, but it does toughen up the paint film. So, uh, I mean, this is basically what I what I start doing. I just start scrubbing away. You can see it's very thinly. Uh, sorry, I took this long to start painting. <laughs>